أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله with episode number four of women of the Quran إن شاء الله as we continue um, uh, with this series uh, a reminder إن شاء الله تعالى that um, we talk about E for the last three weeks and uh, inshallah ta'ala this is how we're gonna try to do it is we talk about somebody who is known just like Eve a wife of a prophet um, and so on and the same time also we talk about ordinary people uh, so today we're gonna talk about an ordinary person but she's not an ordinary woman um, She's a woman, uh, subhanAllah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to send a chapter, chapter 58 on her behalf, chapter 58 of the Quran, which is called Al-Mumtahina. Uh, Al-Mumtahina is the word that means the, uh, I'm sorry, um, uh, Al-Mujadila. Uh, chapter 58, Al-Mujadila, is the chapter that talks about the arguing woman, the woman that was arguing. Um, Secondly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of this woman's uh, complaint uh, to the Prophet, peace be upon him, changed the entire laws, um, uh, as a tribal laws, a clan laws. Uh, thirdly, subhanAllah, I want you to keep in mind that this is 7th century Arabia. This is the first uh, Me Too, uh, if, if there's anything that is, resembles Me Too movement, uh, she actually... Um, uh, was a woman that that led that movement um, uh, that actually uh, uh, saw a, a lot of this dominance uh, male dominance in her tribal and clanhood society that, that she decided to speak out against it uh, but not to speak out against this uh, despite her faith but because of her faith uh, fourthly uh, subhanallah um, um, I could call her one of the first uh, a feminist uh, of the seventh century that came about to dismantle uh, this idea of a um, um, uh, dominant male uh, society in a tribal and a clanhood society. So, who is she and what is her name? Uh, her name is Aus. Uh, her name is uh, Khawla bint Thalaba, and her husband name is Aus bin bin Samit. So Khawla is her name, um, and her husband name is Aus. Names um, um, are, um, you know, of course, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not mention her by name, but rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the conversation because she was so persistent in her conversation. First, she showed up to the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with an appointment, unannounced, and uh, she... Um, uh, the door of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as always, the door of the Prophet Sallallahu is always open. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, actually his wife Aisha Radiallahu Anha wa Artaha, was washing the hair of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I want to go through some details because I have a point to make, SubhanAllah. So she asked permission to speak to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet was, you know, had a private moment. His wife was washing his hair and so on. And um, such as the life... Uh, of a public figure such as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, um, uh, sometimes people just come into my office with no appointment. And you, just today, somebody just walked in my office without appointment. This, but he had that, um, you know, he had that stress look at his face. So this woman had this stressful look uh, on her face. And she asked Sayyida Aisha permission to speak to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a public servant, Prophet of Allah. And Sayyida Aisha radiyallahu anha wa ardaha asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said there's this woman, uh, Khawla bintu Thalaba, out on the, at the door, and she want to speak with you. And so she came in, uh, the Prophet said, let her in, if she looked distressed. So let her in, so she walked in. And um, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wife continue washing and drying the hair of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she started talking to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about not only her problem, but about a societal problem. What is the problem? In a clanhood society, in a, um, um, 
what's the word I want to say? In, 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 in a, 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 a clanhood society, in a tribal society, um, a man actually could come to his wife uh, if he's upset with her or mad with her and practice this dominance statement saying to his wife um, that or taking an oath on himself not to ever touch his wife ever again physically. So the word in Arabic is vihar, and vihar comes from the ver uh, from the from the from the uh, uh, a noun vahr. Vahr means back. Basically, I'm giving you my back, or you are to me just like my own the back of my mother. You're you're to me just like my mother. So you are still married to me. I will not approach you physically. However, you're gonna be stuck in my house taking care of the kids or whatever it is. And I will not divorce you either for somebody else to do it. And such was the dominance is actually the man would say that publicly. So not only uh, would he humiliate, uh, uh, you know, that, 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 that not only would you humiliate uh, his wife, but that's a humiliation from the entire family. But at the same time, when he says it publicly, it becomes uh, a public issue that nobody will approach that woman for marriage. So the woman is stuck. She could, you know, she's coming to the Prophet ﷺ with this distress. She's coming to the Prophet ﷺ with this uh, uh, um, hard feelings. Her family is destroyed. Uh, not only that, uh, uh, subhanAllah, it looks like uh, Aus, Aus bin al-Samit, uh, um, you know, as the woman was, uh, was talking to the Prophet wasallam, says that Aus bin al-Samit, um, actually after he calmed down, after a few days and so on and so forth, and there are many narrations of this story, but we're getting the morality of the story, that Aus uh, bin al-Samit actually wanted to have a physical relationship with his wife, and his wife was actually upholding the tribal law that saying he could no longer touch her. So she prevented herself from him. Until she talks to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, I want you to, I wanted to be clear here uh, in this instance um, that um, the practice is extremely bizarre. And now when we talk about it from 7th century, from, from, uh, from this, uh, uh, from 21st century uh, perspective, that sounds even more bizarre. That a man could actually have that much power and say to his wife, I will no longer approach you physically, but you're no longer, and but you're still my wife, and um, I will not divorce you. So she, you're stuck here with me. The, this, this, this idea of dominance. So the woman came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the woman who wants to uphold the tribal law, and, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam actually. Um, her husband, Aus, wanted to go talk to the Prophet Sallallahu but the husband shied away. Imagine, the man shied away from talking to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi about the subject, and the woman was strong enough to stand. Uh, by the way, uh, in Arabic, the word Rajul, in Arabic, which means that the word Rajul is referred to a man, it has nothing to do with being a male or a female. The word Rajul in Arabic is for somebody who stands up. Right from rigid, from from feet. So, so, she, so she stood up, and she went to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and she told the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that Aus have actually made this oath on me that he will not touch me physically, and I will be to him like his mother, and I'm stuck, and this is not fair. So what do I do, O Prophet of Allah? Uh, he wants to approach me against what 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 do I do? And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Um, I wanted to be clear, subhanAllah, this is, sounds very odd, but the Prophet ﷺ, he said, I have no order from Allah. I know what you're saying is, um, uh, is odd. I know what you're saying is unfair. I know what you're saying is not uh, uh, in line with Islamic spirit and Islamic law and, Isla and, and justice and, 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 and everything else. But this law have not changed by the divine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So she started asking not once, but twice. She started saying, she was talking to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over and over and over. Uh, so that's why um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
called this Al Mujadila. She was arguing with the Prophet. So Jidal, Jidal is arguing. She was arguing with the Prophet. I have a family, O Prophet of Allah. This is not right. This kind of law is not right. O Prophet of Allah, if he does not want me physically, uh, then he should divorce me so I could start another family. Um, o Prophet of Allah, uh, and then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for four times, he said, Ma araki illa qad hurrimti alayhi. He said, I see, I could, I could give you nothing because uh, as far as I know, this law has not been abrogated by God Almighty. There's no Islamic law against that. Then the woman, subhanAllah, start talking emotionally to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I have young children. Um, uh, if, if I don't take care of those children, who will take care of those children, O Prophet of Allah? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, again, uh, refraining. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a Prophet of Allah, is a messenger of Allah. He cannot legislate without the divine power of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Although he was seeing this as something that is wrong, he was seeing that as something that is not right. But the Prophet ﷺ could not give her any other explanation. So the Prophet ﷺ, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, um, kind of like was quiet after four times of telling her that there is no decree from God Almighty. Then this, lo this lady turned away from the Prophet ﷺ. And this is really very touchy because the Prophet ﷺ, the merciful man um, that worship the merciful knows that this is not right, but he could not do anything without the divine power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then she turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qa'ila. She don't turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as she was leaving the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At this moment, I'm just going to give you the short period of time. At this moment, the Prophet's wife Aisha is drying the hair of the Prophet So the whole conversation is the time of the wife of the Prophet washing the hair of the Prophet and drying the hair of the Prophet not a whole, no, 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 no. there was no electricity back then, with a towel, right? And the woman turned around and walking away and she said, Allahumma anzil ala lisani nabiyika. Ma yaqdi li fi amri. She said, Oh Allah, to you I complain. Right? Oh Allah, reveal on the tongue of your messenger what gives me a good decree. So what really solved my problem. Oh Allah, I'm asking you, you to send something on the tongue of your messenger so he, so 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 this law would change. Uh, then مَا يَقْضِي لِي فِي أَمْرِي To the point that, oh God, I want you to send a law and it has to be spoken. I and mean, she's asking specifically, she wants a law and he wants to have her to be spoken by the Prophet wasallam. that would resolve that situation. Not only for her, but for everyone. And the narrator, he say, as she said, fi amri, there's a ya at the end, and she, she's, she's actually prolonged the word amri until the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyida Aisha, yelled. As Sayyida Aisha yelled, now the Sayyida Aisha is, is drying the hair of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Prophet started to shake. So the lady was still saying and prolonging the last letter of her prayer as the Prophet started to shake. And, and Sayyida Aisha yelled from seeing the Prophet shaken because Sayyida Aisha knows that the Prophet Sallallahu is shaken because revelation came to him. What happened? Gabriel came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi So the lady now, I want you to see the scene. The Prophet is shaken. Sayyida Aisha is holding a towel. Sayyida Aisha is screaming that the Prophet is shaken and the woman is, who's about to leave the house of the Prophet turn around and looks at the Prophet and the Prophet peace be upon him will start reciting Quran this is chapter 54 of the Quran 50 uh, I'm sorry uh, um, uh, 58 I, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting old uh, 58 of the Quran Surah Al-Mujadila 
uh, uh, the chapter named as the arguing woman. Allah say, قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا وَتَشْتَكِي إِلَى اللَّهُ Allah says, Allah have heard the speech and the argument of the woman that's arguing with you about her husband. And she is complaining to Allah. And then Allah say, وَاللَّهُ يَسْمَعُ تَحَاوُرُكُمَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيعٌ بَصِيرٌ he said, Allah is, uh, is listening to your argument. But also, Allah says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sami'un basir. All seeing and all hearing. Imagine. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, for an entire, um, uh, an entire chapter, gives laws and regulation about this. Actually abrogating this. Completely taking that out. This is injustice. If you don't want your wife... And you guys have arguing on, on whatever it is, then you let your wife go, you divorce, you go your way, you go your own your own way. The idea of separation in Islam is, is not even there, except in a very, very, very rigid circumstances where a husband and wife could be separated for a short period of time in, in order for um, uh, things to get better. Uh, however, the uh, prolonged uh, uh, separation in Islam is not a law. So... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Jibreel alayhi salam to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as this woman is leaving saying قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا Allah have heard, Allah has seen, Allah has all seen, all hearing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to make a point to reveal an entire chapter about this woman. Uh, this woman, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, Khawla bint Thalaba. Uh, this is not the last uh, uh, of the story. Um, as, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam actually um, uh, um, would immediately, of course the, pro the Prophet was illiterate, so it was Jibreel who came to him, Gabriel came to him, the Prophet was reciting the Quran, because that's what she asked. She asked, Oh Allah, I want to hear from the tongue of your prophet, I want, you know, so Jibreel alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salam and listen to this woman. Now, um, with that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentions that your wife is not your mother. Um, actually, yeah, your wife ain't your mama. Your wife ain't your mama. I don't know if that's a song or not, but somebody needs to make a song out of it, whatever. Your, ma your, your wife is not your mother. The mother, the mother uh, is the, the woman that gave birth to you is your mother, as the Quran said. And the one that birth is for you is your wife. So not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala start making, you know, you cannot do that. You cannot, you cannot do that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, sent actually um, uh, um, um, a, a, uh, an expiation uh, for uh, these kind of circumstances because she's not the only woman that is living or was about to be living with this really unjust law. She's not a wife. I mean, she's a wife, but there's no physical relationship between the husband and the wife, and she's stuck. She's not divorced. She's just, just stuck, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for those men who actually make this oath, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, uh, says then they should free a slave. Uh, Islamically, 7th century, had, this is how Islam got rid of slavery. It made it part of theology. It made it part of compensating your sins is that if you made a sin, then you free a slave and that person becomes an equal member of that society. If he cannot, then he should fast. Uh, if he cannot do that, then he could fast uh, two consecutive months. Uh, if not, then he could... Uh, feed 60 poor people. So that's in that in that order. So Islam, when it comes to uh, uh, compensating for your for your sin, Islam uh, hits you really hard. Okay, free a slave, and and that's also it solved a societal problem of slavery uh, and freeing slave as early as seventh century, um, encouraging uh, freeing slaves. And then if you cannot do that, then you fast uh, two consecutive months. And if you cannot do that, then give sadaqah. For 60 people and the husband could do neither one of these but then the Prophet وسلم, also made some prophetic provisions I want you to keep attention to that because the Prophet could not change the law 
Allah listened to this woman and sent Gabriel to the Prophet almost immediately, instantaneously. And the law have changed. And the Prophet ﷺ, when he found out that her husband could neither free a slave, neither can he fast two consecutive months because he's old, neither can he give a sadaqah for 60 uh, people, 60 uh, people, uh, then the Prophet ﷺ actually did sadaqah on behalf. He did charity on behalf of that man as a compensation for the oath he made. I want you to see how the Prophet actually knew that this kind of a law, uh, the tribal law, was not fair, but he could not change it. So when the divine revelation came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet wasallam chose to be the one to help the husband uh, fix the problem. Now, when we say that, subhanAllah, um, uh, your wife ain't your mama, as the Quran says, uh, subhanAllah, and that law is null and void, is no longer there. Uh, nobody could do that. But it took a woman, subhanAllah, that was arguing with the Prophet wasallam over and over and over, and the Prophet holding his, 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 uh, 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 his grounds. As a matter of fact, this is not the last about, uh, you know, uh, this is not the last thing that this woman have done. Because um, as her husband and go, them go back to each other, um, as after even 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 after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam died, uh, it was related that Umar radiyallahu anhu arda Sayyidna Umar radiyallahu anhu arda. So after the Prophet sallam was Abu Bakr Siddiq, a short period of two and a half years uh, of reign, and then after that Umar uh, took over. Now, why is it significant to also talk about this woman? Because this woman did not finish. Uh, feminism and 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 uh, the rights of women subhanallah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him to people in the Quran um, are there uh, to stand up for the rights of human rights and women's rights are human rights right um, it was related there's a story of Umar radiallahu anhu arda uh, one time that he was in the masjid uh, one of the narration that Khawla bin Thalaba actually was in Jum'ah prayer and Umar radiallahu anhu ardah was standing in the middle of the masjid giving Friday sermon. Now for those of you who are watching me who are not Muslim, uh, Friday sermons are very, very serious matter for Muslims. So normally we don't tell jokes. Uh, normally everybody's listening because it's, it's a form of a prayer and in a prayer you're just connecting with God. So when somebody's given a sermon, nobody is to interrupt the imam for any reason whatsoever, except if there is an emergency, A, or B, if the imam said something wrong, straight wrong. So I want to give you that setting. The imam is Umar ibn al-Khattab, the second khalifa after Prophet uh, uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, right? given a sermon in the masjid of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in Medina, so the holiest city. And Umar is not only Umar, is Khalifa. He is Amir al -Mu'mineen. He is the leader of all the Muslims. And Umar realized that there was problem uh, in the society. And he was trying to address that from the pulpit of the Prophet That's what we do. You know, sometimes uh, people ask me, you know, uh, the, the ser our sermon have to be relevant to the people. You know, uh, it's just really fascinating. Sometimes somebody come and tell me, Brother Imad, you're talking about politics. Brother Imad, you're talking about social issues. You're talking about this. We want to hear about, yes, yeah, spirituality is part of Islam. But also, my, my brothers and sisters in Islam, you address societal ills and societal problems in the sermon. So Omar is standing up and saying that we should promote marriage in the community. And what he sees as a problem is that women are asking for a large amount of dowry, mahr. So Sayyidina Omar wanted to limit the amount of mahr. I know you heard that story before, but one narration, I did not know that, one narration said it was this same woman, Khawla bintu Thalaba that stood up in the masjid as Umar is saying we should 
you should lower the amount of women you know oh women you should not ask for a large amount this way you could find a husband basically and oh men you know uh, you know you should not give women uh, whatever they ask you know you should actually negotiate and so on and so forth and the aim of Omar was very honorable he wanted to promote marriage within a society because he sees a lot of young men uh, they could not afford to get married because uh, women are asking for a high dowry, right? Um, dowry is not our subject, but, you know, women in Islam could ask for a dowry, a spousal gift, sometimes could be symbolic, but apparently that time it was very large. So Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu wa arda was given the sermon in the holiest, second holiest place for Muslims, which is the, the Masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nobody is supposed to say anything, right? He's the Imam and he is also the Khalifa. And this woman stood up in the middle of the masjid, right? Uh, yelling. Because the, the way Muslims pray is men, women, children. Uh, not because women have to be in the back, but because the way we, the gesture of our prayers. And uh, we, we stand shoulder to, before, before Corona, shoulder to shoulder, foot to foot, very close to each other. And Omar hears somebody yelling at him, from the back. Ittaqillah ya Umar. Umar, be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, wa in ataytum ihdahunna. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not limit the amount of dowry in the Quran. Actually, on the contrary, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encouraged men to give more money to women. And you cannot stand up here and change the Quran. So Umar radiallahu anhu wa arda um, put his head down. He did not ask for a research committee. Did not did not say that you know you're not supposed to interrupt me because he knows the rules very well. He was going against the Quran, and this woman told him, "You are. I want my rights as a woman, not because, not despite of my faith, but because of it." And Omar stood. He was quiet, he put his head down, and he put his head up, and he said, min Umar. This woman knows more about Allah and the laws of Allah than Umar. Now the last incident is also with Umar. Um, it doesn't look like this woman is speaking on Umar, but uh, during the time of Umar radiallahu anhu arda, uh, was a time of establishing the rules of justice um, we have the rules of justice in the Quran and it was shown to us by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam but in a way during the time of Abu Bakr Siddiq there was a time of um, a turmoil and the time of Omar radiallahu anhu arda almost 14 years uh, of Omar establishing rules of justice um, so Omar was walking in the market one day on his donkey or riding on his donkey with his uh, uh, with the people around him as this old woman stopped him. Uh, guess who that old woman is? Yes, that is Khawla bintu Thalaba. She stopped Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu wa arda and Umar stopped and the people with Umar, you know, his bodyguards or, or, or the people that take care of the, uh, of the government affairs uh, or his cabinet said, oh Umar, we don't have time for this old lady. Come on, we have to walk. And he stopped, right? And um, she said to him, we know you as Umayran. We know you as a little Umar. Then you became Umar. Yeah, you, used, you used to be a shepherd. Now you became Umar. Now you're Amir al-Mu'mineen. Basically, you were Umayran. You were a little boy. I know you as a little boy. Then you became Umar when you became a Muslim. And now you are Amir al-Mu'mineen. You are the prince of the believers meaning you are in, in you are the leader of all the muslims then she said fattaqillaha ya umar my advice to you umar is fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be mindful of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala umar put his head down she said to him she gave him two advices innahu man khafa al-wa'id qarib alayhi al-ba'id she said oh umar if you are mindful of the threats that's coming in the hereafter, you will not think of the hereafter as being that far away. 
you will live it. وَمَنْ خَافَ الْمَوْتِ خَشِيَ عَلَى الْفَوْتِ And if you are fearful of death, then you will not worry about, you will, you will take action immediately. So she told him to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to remember the day of judgment. Because if you remember the day of judgment, you will act justly in the moment. And she asked him to remember, see the Muslims believe there's two days of judgment. The communal day of judgment, the big one, and the death, which is the personal day of judgment. So she told them to, to remember the communal day of judgment, and that's he would act justly in the moment. And then to remember death, which is the personal day of judgment. Um, and this way, if you remember death, you will act almost immediately. So Omar put his head down and start weeping. And his anchorage says, let's go. He said, no, 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 no. I want to listen to this lady. Do you know who this lady is? And everybody said, no, we don't know. Just an old woman. He said, she's is not just an old woman. This is a woman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to send Gabriel on her behalf. Made the Prophet speak the verses. قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا Allah have heard. This is the woman that Allah have heard her from seven heavens and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have revealed Quran on her behalf and who am I if Allah listened to her Saint Gabriel and made the Prophet speak uh, about her who am I not to listen to her advice Khawla bintu Thalaba was her name chapter 58 was revealed on her behalf the first Me Too uh, movement woman um, uh, the first one that uh, abrogate Allah, subhanAllah, because of her movement, abrogate Allah, that give extreme injustice to women that are married um, and uh, demolish uh, a male dominance over their wives in the case um, uh, of this tribal law. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who listen to the speech and follow the best of it. Jazakumullahu khayran. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته